Hey guys, it's Logos here, and I'm here with a mod um, tutorial for Applied Energistics. Um, I've realized that people are having struggles on um, with Applied Energistics, uh, and it's personally one of my favorite mods, just because it's so... It's just a really good way of storing your items without having to worry too much. Uh, that is depending on how much power you're producing and just how many much materials you have. This is a pretty late game uh, type of storage, something that would uh, that that's really useful. That uh, if you want a lot of space for stuff and let me set this on today real quick. Uh, if you want a lot of room for stuff and you don't want to worry so yeah let's get cracking on with this so as you can see this is a bunch of stuff that I have got set up uh, before the tutorial just to show you what I'm gonna go over with um so this is the thing you're gonna want to start with it's called the Emmy controller and I'll show you how it's made right here Get myself out of cheat mode real quick. And it's made with uh, Fluix crystals, which are made with Cerdus Quartz, Nether, uh, Nether Quartz, and Redstone. Uh, and an advanced processor, which is uh, an assembly smelted, which requires a quartz cutting knife, a diamond, redstone, and silicon is uh, Cerdus Quartz dust or Nether Quartz dust um, smelted. And a quartz cutting knife is made by like this, and it has multiple uses. Um, and by multiple uses, I mean like you can use it more than once. Uh, I have creative cells uh, here f just for demonstration, and I'll build a separate AE system later. I won't get to quantum stuff because the mod pack I'm using has a. Uh, the thing that goes inside the quantum link chamber disabled so it won't show up here and so I can't get it to work now usually if I had if I had uh, the material that I needed it would link these two quantum field rings together and this crafting terminal would connect up to this AE system and it would work completely wirelessly so that is pretty cool and this is an Emmy dark cable and it can be used to separate or conjoin uh, AE systems and I'll show you that when I build the new one and this is the molecular assembly chamber or the Mac uh, and it's the auto crafting system and there's a bunch of smaller things that I'll get onto later on in the tutorial so let's get started building our own little um, ME system. So, first of all, I'll just plot down this creative cell, and you're gonna want an ME controller. It does, uh, this is the only block that we will want to power out of your whole ME system. This is the only block that you'll need to power. So, once you have this, you can build everything off of it, it uh, and it doesn't matter if the like if I'll show you what I mean in a second so this ME drive is something else you want but actually I should get an ME chest just for demonstrating first uh, this ME chest will be connected up to the controller although it's not connected up by any wiring or anything so you can keep connecting uh, stuff like chests to it and they're all part of the system they don't need to be connected by wire but if you want this ME chest to work, you are going to need um, you're going to need storages. So right here are all the different types of storages you can use, and I'll just get myself actually I'll get myself a 1K because this is just going to be for demonstration. So 1K. Well, let me show you this without it. Without it, you, this chest is completely worthless so you can't do anything with it but once you put this in you can put all the stuff you want and up to 63 different items 
as you can see they stack up unlimitedly but uh, you can only have 63 slots out of all this and uh, up to a certain amount of uh, what they call bytes so it goes uh, that's what these are they all hold the same amount of types but each holds different type uh, number of bytes so bytes is what you want to do if you're holding a lot of one thing so you might want a 64k if you're holding a lot of cobblestone or something uh, so yeah uh, let's get rid of this and if you'll see that it keeps the storage onto this drive which is really cool it's really useful if you want to relocate things and I'll find uh, I'll show you guys a way later on in the tutorial to transfer things on to one uh, drive and that'll be really useful for transferring stuff so let's get started um, you're going to want ME cable which is the basic cable the uh, cover cable doesn't do anything special uh, but it looks better so we can build off like this and what you're gonna wanna build is a drive we don't have to connect it directly to the ME cable so yeah if you put the ME drive um, if you put in the storage inside the ME drive you can hold up to 10 so this is like an ME chest times 10 but the thing is you can't access the internal storage of it for that you are going to need uh, ME crafting terminal or regular terminal. A crafting terminal lets you craft things inside of it while a regular terminal just lets you get things outside of it. So you'll see this has a crafting bench. Uh, just imagine a regular terminal uh, all this without the bench and it just extends these slots down. So yeah still both really useful uh, but I prefer to crafting terminal over to regular terminal because you can just craft right inside of it and actually let me show you this cobblestone um, if I get myself some cobblestone I put it inside of there um, oh, wrong thing. if I go like this and let's say I wanted to make compressed cobblestone it will take the stuff out of the ME system up there and automatically put it into the grid so that's really useful okay so now hmm let's see what I should get on to next and I'll be right back I think we should get on to the auto crafting and if you see that giant box over there that's exactly what it is this is can get pretty expensive so this isn't something you will want to do immediately definitely not but it is good uh, for late game crafting. So I'm going to build this for you guys right here. So that you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. And yeah. So I'm going to build a 5x5. Five five. This is a pretty large one. Uh, and it's definitely the largest size you'll ever need. But you can go larger if you want it's just not necessary but it uh, what I've learned from experience is that this takes a ton of iron so if you're running low on iron don't even consider it try to go mining if you want this because once you do build it it will definitely pay off and I'll show you why in just a moment let me fix this up real quick and I'll show you what goes in the inside of this shell now the inside uh, you put in crafting CPUs and pattern providers both of which cost a diamond each so if you're trying to build if you're running low on diamonds don't try because this will be nine times three so lots yeah <laughs> so for now I am going to fill this in with uh, pattern providers and I'll show you what the pattern providers do in a second and crafting CPUs so crafting CPUs go in right there and the more crafting CPUs the better because uh, each one increases the speed of auto crafting and you'll definitely want that for later on so 
let's place down a pattern encoder and give ourselves a bunch of blank patterns. The pattern encoder does not need to be hooked up to anything, it's just here so that uh, you can get things. Uh, I'll show you in a sec. And blank patterns, where are you? There we go. So I just gave myself a ton. Oh, oops. Uh, there we go. So let's say we wanted to learn how to auto craft compressed cobblestone because, I don't know, you want to store all your cobblestone. You put in the recipe right here and it, uh, what the outcome is, it'll show up right there. You press encode and it'll pop up right there if you have blank patterns in. Press clear if you just want to clear it. Now what you want to do with it is plop it into here. And there it is. Let me the day. So now let's say we take out all that stuff. Let's say, do I have any cobble? Yeah. Let's say I want to make ten of this. It'll use that right there to create it in the compressed cobblestone. It didn't quite make it all, so let me just throw in some more. And it keeps the keeps memory of what it is. I'll show you how you can keep track of what you're crafting. You take this crafting monitor right here. And by the way, I'm assuming all of you have NEI, so I'm not going to show you all the crafting recipes. So yeah, if you don't, if you see a lack of crafting recipes, just look it up in NEI and you should be able to get it from there. So you put down uh, the crafting monitor and it shows you what you're crafting and what's missing. So... It says I'm missing several, uh, seven cobblestone to finish this up. So let's take that and put it in here. And any second now, 10. So yeah, and it's completely finished and nothing's queued. So that's really nice for auto crafted things. It's definitely nice for things that take a while, especially applied energistics uh, blocks, because oh boy, they can take a long time to craft. So. Let's see. Right now, I suppose we can go over to a uh, wireless access point because this will definitely help you later on. And for this, you're going to need the tool, the uh, wireless access terminal right here, which will allow you to access your uh, AE system remotely. So you take this and uh, put it, plop it in the side right there, and it's linked. Now you're going to want to charge this, uh, I'll charge this and I'll be right back. So what you're going to need for this, if you're only using applied energistics, I suppose you're probably going to want the ME power relay. It's not as fast as things that will, uh, that you can use in, uh, in using stuff like thermal expansion, but it does work. And you'll see that it takes the energy that's coming from this uh, creative energy cell and it's transferring it across the system and into here, which is really cool. And I'll let this charge up in a second. And while that's charging, we can hook up the wireless access point. So what the wireless access point it is, it lets this work. It lets this thing work. So what you're going to want to put in it to increase the range are these wireless boosters. You can only hold up the 16 of them. So yeah, but those 16 go around 100 blocks, which is really useful. So let me show you what this does. All right, so you hold it in your inventory, click. Oh, not linked. Oh, okay. I just got rid of the one that I linked. Okay, so you take this, you click, and there's your AE system, and it gradually loses power. The further away you are, the faster it loses power. So we can see that way over here, it's going to lose power much faster, not far enough. And it's not working. It works on the server. Okay. Well, I guess you have a lot of power then. 
because usually it goes by much faster when you're further away. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why I did that, but whatever. So, on to the next thing. Um, well, I will go over the quantum stuff in case you're unfamiliar with it. But I don't have the last piece of it, so I won't be able to show you how it works. But I'll be right back. So what you're going to want to do is get eight of these uh, quantum field rings and put them in a circle like this. And you're going to need two of these, so you're going to want 16 of them. Oh, messed that up. And in the center, you're going to want to put the quantum link chamber. And it makes this really cool multi-block. And any distance away, I think any distance anyways, you're going to want to put a second one like this the exact same way. And you're going to want to power them too. So let me take these rest of the energy cells and power them. And we can adjust the matching that one's powered because it's not going to work anyways. Anyways, you take an item. I can't think of the name at the moment because it's I don't have it in here but you place it in there and it should um uh, actually you have to hook up the ME system too so you take this and keep going with it ah dang it thermal expansion and ME systems do not like to work and it goes into there and if I had that item oh, whatever and if I had that item it would go into here and still work so that is a really cool feature if you want to do wireless AE and you have like a separate base far far away from your actual base it'll still work but it does cost a lot of power though so keep that in mind when you're building that so Next things first, uh, well, next things next, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, um, the interface, yeah, there it is, so, oh, did I already have them, M E and yeah, I did, so, you, the interface is really cool, as it can, uh, export things from the AE system, into stuff like a redstone furnace. So let's get that. A uh, redstone furnace. Uh, take it. And where is it? Oh, duh. So what you're gonna want to do is take a wrench, almost any wrench, and face it in the direction of that. And you're wanna configure this so that it imports from the back I'll make it so it exports at the top and you're also going to want and this is for automation too uh, you're gonna want an import bus or yeah in, uh, basic import bus and what this will do is take things out of this and put it in there so we can just take a ME cable and put it right here so let's say we wanted to t turn uh, cobblestone into stone. We can go over to this pattern encoder, take stone, put it right there, and cobblestone, cobble. Um, cobblestone. And put one cobblestone right there. We can encode it. But you'll see that if we try to put it in here, it's red. It's because it doesn't identify it as an actual recipe. So what we're going to want to do is put it in the interface. So now if we look in here, it says we can craft stone. So let's craft 64 of it. And you will see that this redstone furnace, is, if it were powered, would be smelting all this and importing it back into the ME system uh, ready for you to see yeah so really really cool if you uh, that's really good for automating things and yeah 
I'll see if there's anything else to see, and yeah, I'll be right back. To show you the rest of this, because it's already set up and I didn't want to reset it up for what uh, it is. So, if you you see these uh, fuzzy uh, storage buses, um, you, there's regular and fuzzy. All fuzzy means is that it, uh, it pretty much integrates mods. So that if you have like two different coppers from two different mods, it will recognize both of them as one. If you understand what I mean. So, yeah. And you'll see that these items are in this chest. Uh, oh, I forgot to show you the storage monitor. It shows how many of each item is in there. And if you want to lock, like, you just do that. You just click with the item. And if you want to lock it, you just shift, click, and it locks. And you, it won't let you do it. But if you want to unlock it, just shift, click it again. And you can change it up. So, anyways, what these buses do, they, uh, let's say you have a bunch of chests laying around from an earlier system that you set up, and you feel lazy and don't want to get rid of all the items in it, you can set up these buses so that that's the storage that will use before it uses the stuff in your drive. You see that there's nothing used up in this drive, but there is stuff right here. It's because they're getting stored inside of this chest before there. So really good if you have a bunch of chests laying around and you're just going to wait to get rid of them or something like that. Or you just don't want to spend the materials to make these. So yeah. And the last thing I'm going to show you in this tutorial is the ME Dart Cable. And you see I have this set up with a 64K storage. And it has a bunch of cobblestone in it. But if you go and you see that it's all hooked up and stuff. But if you look in here no cobblestone that's because the dark cable can separate it into a separate system pretty much unless activated by a redstone signal so once you activate it you look in here there's all the cobblestone I really hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys uh, if you like the video please leave a like and if you want to see more of this uh, subscribe and maybe leave a suggestion for other mods that I can help you guys with so yeah anyways guys Logo signing off and I'll be with you guys in the next episode. Hey guys, um, I'm back and before I uh, go, I wanted to show you guys two more things real quick because they're probably pretty useful to a lot of you for automation and keeping a certain amount of blocks in your system. Uh, so this is the ME level emitter. So I have this set up so that if there's two stacks of stone uh, it will emit a redstone signal, therefore stopping this redstone furnace. And uh, the redstone furnace should keep going uh, until this redstone level emitter turns it off. So once there's two stacks of stones in here, it turns off this redstone furnace, therefore making it um, stop producing stone. So it will stop once there's two stacks of stone. The other one is this MEIO port. So what this does is takes uh, storages and puts it into uh, other storages. So uh, let's say I'm going to give myself one more drive or two more. So you put it in here and let's say you wanted to transfer all the data from here. Oh, it already did. That was quick. So yeah, it transferred all the uh, data from here and put it into here. So that's good for transferring all all the items from one thing to another. You could also do the complete opposite and put all the stuff from here into here. Uh, as you can see that it just put it all into this storage drive. So if you want to transfer all the storage from here into one storage drive, just simply put one in uh, a few uh, storage drives in here, and it'll move it all into there. So I hope you guys liked the tutorial. Like I said earlier, like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys next time.